Okay. Now we talk about abstract or uh, summary. Okay. They are more linked with the objectives, so I thought we should discuss them now. So uh, some reports or some books have uh, uh, abstracts, and some of them have summaries. Okay, I'll show you the difference between them. So uh, the abstract selects areas of interest which are covered by the report, and it may include a list of keywords as well. Okay, keywords are important terms which you have used in the report. Okay, for example, the example I keep on giving, re using recycled uh, plastic for uh, structures, right? Improvement of structures. Okay, so the key term is what? Recycling, plastic, strength, structure. Maybe I am using some test to measure the strength, name of the test. Maybe I am doing it for a specific type of structure, building a structure for example only or for bridge structure only. So that would be a keyword, huh? Got it? Okay, so like I mentioned, this is something related to your uh, objectives. Okay, so the keywords from the objectives and the title should be part of the abstract and it should cover the areas of interest which your report is covering. Okay, why? To make your report more discoverable. If I ask you to search anything online and you do the search, you will find many reports, many research papers, many articles for which only the abstract is given, the summary is given. Okay, The title is given, the summary is what the, the abstract is given. If you want to read in more detail, click on this link or request it from the author or pay the subscription, something like this. Okay, so in our world, in the, in, the, in the online world, documents are linked with this information. So when you are searching on Google, Google Scholar, or any other search engine, the search engine makes it more discoverable, makes it more accessible to you on the basis of these things, the title and the abstract or the summary. Okay, so if your report is about electrical engineering or chemical engineering, but your abstract and title doesn't show it, then most probably somebody who is looking for these fields will not see your report in the search, you know, in the uh, in the search results, or he will not see at the see it at the top. Obviously, there are other things as well. I can make it more discoverable by paying. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about fair and non-payment methods. Okay, so uh, uh, this is normal time, right? If I ask you for some information, what is the first thing you will do? You will go online and search for it. Okay, and when you search for it, what are things which will appear at the top which are more relevant? Okay, and usually the re relevance is from the uh, is decided by Google or any other search algorithm on the basis of the abstract and the title. Okay? Because these things are open access normally. Abstract and title is normally open access for everything. Okay, you don't have to ask for permission or you don't have to pay. Okay, you can see the abstract and the title. Okay. So th this is like an advertisement for your report. Hmm? It's like a marketing strategy. Okay, so you want to buy my report, see it has this. Get it? Somebody who is interested in environmental pollution or recycling, then he, he would know from the abstract that this report is about recycling or environmental pollution. Okay, so the abstract should cover that so that the report is more uh, discoverable. Okay, <coughs> the summary is usually more comprehensive, it covers more things. Okay, that's why we call it a summary. Okay, what's the difference between the word abstract and summary? Abstract, you get the main point, and the summary, you summarize the main point. Good enough, good. Okay, so abstract is you are extracting the main information out of the entire report, and summary is you are trying to cover 
all the aspects in a summarized manner. Okay, so summary is more detailed than the abstract. Okay, it should give a general picture of the report and uh, oh yeah, so summary can act as a reminder. Okay, so I read the report one time. Okay, now next time somebody asks me for what was in the report and I don't remember something, I will not read the entire report again. I can remind myself from using the summary. Okay, and uh, for those who will never read the whole report, this is again something very common. And this happens with the bosses and the clients. Now, you prepare a 200 page report. The boss and the client doesn't have that much time to read 200 page report from each and every employee. Okay. In most of the cases, they will only read the summary. So they decide whether you did a good job or not from the summary. They decide whether they have the required information or not from the summary. Okay. They decide whether they should, they should keep you or fire you from the... I told you last time. Engineering jobs, they involve writing technical reports. You just write report for everything. Okay, so if your report and summary is not strong enough, you are not worth your place in the company. Okay. Uh, yeah. So whatever you achieved in the report, your conclusions and recommendations should be part of the abstract of the summary. Okay, your conclusion and recommendation should be part of it. Okay, again, in a summarized way. Uh, it should summarize the contents the most important findings so that the reader can decide whether they want to read the rest of the report or not, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, when you search, you will see the abstract or summary and based upon that you will decide whether I should go to the next link or not. Hmm? Uh, yeah, uh, Majority of the readers, they read only the abstract or the summary, I already mentioned, especially your bosses, your uh, clients, they are more interested in these things, they don't have the time to go through the entire report. Okay. Yeah. So this is a summary. Don't don't worry, I have some other examples. I will, I will hand it out to you. Okay. So this is a summary. Okay. So you can see it is more detailed. It has couple of paragraphs. Okay. So summary can have paragraphs and bullet points. Okay. Subsections. A summary can have that. Okay. Hmm. So uh, so it is talking about the current state we have, the uh, the problem we have, traffic jams and so on. Okay, why we did the project. Okay, and uh, what we did in the project. Okay, what standards did we use? What was our design in the end? Okay, it covers a lot of things. Okay, so this is a summary, more detailed. And like I said, you have more flexibility as well when you write or writing your summary. Okay, you can make paragraphs, you, you can write bullet points, you can make subsections and so on. Okay, if you somehow open any of your textbooks, you have textbooks, right? You have. Okay, you don't read them, but they are there. Okay, so when you open any of your textbooks, you will see a summary which is two or three pages long. Okay, it can happen. An abstract, much shorter, okay, no paragraphs, no bullet points, no subheadings, nothing. Okay, and it's much more, uh, you know, concise as well, much more, uh, what do you call it, uh, even the summary of the summary. Okay, so again, it is talking about the same problem, traffic condition, same, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's ba basically the same thing. Okay, the abstract is about the same project. The previous summary and this abstract is about the same project. They did the same thing. It's in the slides, you can read it in more detail. But you can see here, the same information is covered in a much more concise way. So summary for the same thing will be more detailed. Abstract will be much shorter. Okay. Yeah, some tips and guidelines keep the, so it's like a rule, they came up with a rule, but it's not so important, okay, it's not fixed. 
So they are saying if your report goes up to 50 pages, you may write an abstract of about 250 words. But it's not fixed. It doesn't mean you write a report of uh, uh, 500 pages, so that your abstract can go up to 2,500 words. No. Huh? Got it? It's not, you know, for every 50 pages I have to add to 50 words, it's not like this. Okay? Abstract usually don't go over 500 words, period. Okay? Abstract usually don't go over 500 words. Okay? And less than 200 is considered too small. Less than 200 is very short. That means you did not even cover the main points. Okay? And more than 500 is too long. Okay? So they gave us a, an optimum range here, but I am telling you what is too short or too long. More appropriate, 100 to 150 words or abstract, okay, and it appears on the second page of the report. What's the first page? The time. So the abstract appears before everything else. The title, you are showing the title, right? The title of the report. And the next thing you show is the abstract. So from the abstract, they will see whether they continue or not. Use continuous prose, meaning Prose meaning text. Text. Huh? Use continuous text. So, uh, diagrams, tables, figures, they are not used in summary and abstract. Got it? Okay. Every word is important. Limit the number of words. Okay. We are trying to make it concise, short. Okay. So, if you are spending like half an hour just to read the abstract, that means you did not do a good job. The summary and abstract supposed to take less time. Okay, so they limit the number of words. So the words which do not add anything to the information, remove them. Be as direct as possible. They have given one example here. Okay, instead of writing this, you can write this. Huh? So what did they remove? What's the difference between this and this? In this report. In this report. Usually, you, you may write these things in the report. There's no problem. In this report, in this study, we did this. Okay? But in the abstract, the abstract is about the report. You don't have to write it. Okay? So even words like this can be taken out to remove the, the size of the abstract or the summary. Uh, yeah. Abstract is usually the last part of the report. Now you see the problem here? What's the problem? I said what? You should come at the start. And then it is the last part of the report. Hmm? You must be thinking is this guy is mad, huh? They left it to a mad guy and to handle the summer, huh? Or the summer has caught me. Okay. What's the connection here? Second page and the last. Hmm? Okay. The, that point is about where you put it. And the, that, the last point is about when you write it. So the timing and the place. Huh? Where do you put it? Second page. When do you write it? After finishing the report. Why? Why at the end of the report? Because, because everything is already done. Yeah. So the things which you want to include in the report, you cannot know them until you finish the report. Right? So you finish the report. Now you know your conclusions, recommendations, keywords. Huh? You know all these things. Okay? So you put them in the report in the abstract. Okay? Many cases you can just pick some important statements from the report itself and then just organize it in the summary or the abstract. It becomes very easy actually. If you have written the report yourself, you finish off the abstract in five minutes. Huh? So I just finished my report. Now I have to just write the abstract. It will just take five minutes. 
even if you don't copy and copy and paste. Actually, uh, to tell you uh, honestly, copying, uh, trying to find important information from the report and copying and pasting it in the abstract takes more time than writing it from your mind after you finish the report. Because you already did everything, right? So whatever is important in your mind, it's natural. Hmm? It's natural. When you go out of the class, just think, what is in my mind right now? What did I learn in the whole class? Okay? Anything which you consider important is there. Okay? And nowadays it's very, you know, it's very obvious uh, when you stop looking at the board and start looking at your phone, that means it's not important, right? Uh, so why, when I was looking at the board. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I already mentioned the keywords. Make sure the keywords are in the abstract. If somebody is searching for this information, he will find it. Okay. Uh, in certain technical environments, executive summary is provided instead of an ordinary abstract. Like I said, executive summary is more detailed, more, and you have more flexibility and so on and so forth. Okay. Usually, I already gave you one example, which was what? When do we use executive summary? I, I gave you one example. When? What did I say? Where will you find the summaries? At the end of the No, no. At the end of what? In your textbooks. In your textbooks. So in textbooks, usually we prefer, or they prefer to have executive summaries. Okay. Uh, large governmental reports. If you are uh, uh, preparing a report for any governmental body, then they prefer executive summaries rather than the abstract or a simple summary. An executive summary again is even longer. Uh, it's even longer than the normal summary or the abstract. Okay, got it? Okay, so usually uh, for academic writing, like textbook writing, and uh, official reports, then we prefer uh, executive summaries, we don't give abstract, we, we provide executive summaries. And if you go and read the executive summary or the summary of your textbook, you will even see the things about the authors, things about previous editions and so on. Even if it is not mentioned in the report. If you open the report of the book, the textbook, the textbook will not contain that this author works in this university, the last edition of the book was published in this year, the difference between the new edition and the old edition is this. It is not mentioned in the book. But in the, in the summary, they will mention it. In the summary, they will even mention this information. So the executive summary is, uh, you know, more detailed. Uh, so you can see it, the executive summaries of your textbook. And I've already uploaded one example for the uh, executive summary. Okay, uh, so usually they are one page long, okay, summary or uh, the abstract, abstract is even shorter than one page. But even with the summary, we don't make it longer than one page. Okay, it should provide sufficient quantitative information so that the manager can uh, take the most important decisions and see the uh, extent and the impact of the decision. Okay, so uh, sometimes we even I, I make this mistake. For example, you say, when I use this material, the strength of uh, structure increased. Or when I use this technique, the resistance of this material decreased. Okay, decreased by how much? Okay, or increased by how much? Okay, so you guys have, you know, now the, the discussion about electric vehicles, right? and how it will save energy, hmm. right? We have this perception, right? Hmm. So you say, okay, we will bring electric vehicles in uh, the rain, and it will save energy. Okay, how? And by how much? Hmm. So it will save energy by 30%, or 20%, or 50%, okay? Now why it is important? 
because you know in some cases you are saying something but you cannot prove it okay so your manager cannot decide about it okay so yes yes okay so uh, and the reason why i mentioned this example because uh, you know some what some people say and i agree with that uh, so you say electric vehicles will save energy because they will not work on fuel right they will, they will work on what electricity and how do we generate electricity power stations power stations the power stations need energy source right so they are again taking some kind of energy right so maybe the overall and they are for example country like bahrain our electrical grid is operated through fuel Okay, part of the abstract. The abstract should have four parts. Abstract with summary should have four parts. Uh, introduction, background, objectives. In some cases, you may merge all these three things into two or three statements. That's fine. Okay. Introduction is you introduce the topic. Background is you tell what is the situation right now. An objective is what you did. You understand the difference between them? Introduction is what is a bridge, for example. Background is normally how do we design a bridge? Okay, what method do we use? Objective is what did you do in your report for designing the bridge? Got it? Hmm? People usually confuse between them. Okay, so introduction is you are telling the reader what it is. Background is you are telling the reader what already happened in this feed. Okay? Or in another another word, why it is important. Background can be importance. Okay, so I am building the bridge. Why? Because there is a lot of congestion. Okay. An objective is what you did in the report. Okay. So this and this previous knowledge. This your report. What methods did you use to achieve your objectives? What are the findings and the results from the uh, from the work which you did? Okay, and then conclusions and recommendations. Okay, now what is the difference between results and conclusions, or the findings and results and conclusions? Findings and results obviously same thing, but what is the difference between this and this? Okay, 
results are based upon the information which you have okay conclusion is what you decided from the information so conclusion is your own input this is what you have as it is so i did the test this is the result i did the comparison this much percentage saving and so on okay conclusion is on the basis of these values i decide to do this got it conclusion is from yourself okay results is what you found the numbers and the percentages and so on conclusion is something which you have found okay and recommendations for future let me give you an example okay take 2 minutes to read the text and i will go through it I'll identify for why I am saying that this is a part. Okay. Okay. So the introduction objectives. What what is the report about? Long term memory. Long term memory. Yeah. And what are the objectives of this report? What are they trying to see? What are they trying to test? What are they What are they trying to achieve with this report? Tell me. It's all here, right? what just tell me the statement like you don't have to understand it just tell me that this statement tells me about the this trend is long term memory yeah. more likely a period will remember its previous value now we discuss objectives can be three types right statement hypothesis and question right which one is it It's a statement, and it can also be a hypothesis. It's not a question, obviously. Uh, it can be a hypothesis. Okay. So the report would prove it right or wrong. Okay. The methods used. Okay. So what are the methods used? Uh, persistent measurement. Okay. To quantify this and this. Uh, so the scaling component they used and so on and so forth. So you can see here actually the point which I want to make obviously we don't understand this but the point which I'm uh, which you can see here is the method is not just the name of the method they not say okay we will use persistence measurement and that's it no they are providing some details okay how will they apply the method and so on and so forth and you can see number of samples they used how many series they used this is all under methods so methods of measurement and the data which they used okay so method should include the method which you will use for analysis or for your work and also the method and the data which you have used okay so don't uh, be deceived by the word methods that okay i will only measure uh, mention I, i used american standards my method is 
Astor, ASTM or whatever guy you guys use. Okay? No. Provide some details. Okay? Just the name is not enough. And it has to be something linked with the data as well. If you collected the data using some specific experiment, it should be mentioned. Okay? Uh, main findings, as I mentioned earlier, that finding results are what you have found. Okay? So they found two regimes, two uh, classes of data. Huh? One less than this value, the other one more than this value. So you can see the numbers here. Huh? Same as what they have found in the experiments, whatever experiment they did. Okay? And uh, then where is the conclusion, where is the recommendation? That there are two statements, right? In the yellow section, there are two statements. Okay. The first, obviously, this is usually the uh, the order, conclusion, and then recommendation. Recommendation is, is the last part. Okay. Now, so what did they conclude? For a certain age of value, physical explanation of long-term memory holds. Now, my conclusion should be linked to what? To my values, yes, good. And what did we discuss today? My conclusion should be linked with? Huh? This is an abstract. This conclusion is part of the abstract, right? My hand is part of my body. You cannot say my hand should link to my body, yes. It is already linking. Huh? Objectives. Objectives. Is it? Explanation of long term memory. Okay. And my objective was related to long term memory. Okay. Got it? So you can see it, even the link in the abstract. The objective mentioned in the abstract is linked with the conclusion mentioned in the abstract. Okay, so maybe in the report there are more objectives written. Objectives are written in more detail, and the conclusions would obviously be written in more detail. That if you see the entire report, the conclusion will not be one sentence, right? But whatever you choose from the main report to put in the abstract, they should be linked with each other. Okay, so I chose the main objective and the main conclusion. They are linked with each other. Huh? Got it? So whatever you choose to be in the in the abstract, make sure they are linking with each other. And like I said, if you write it yourself, it's much easier rather, rather than copying and pasting. And uh, nevertheless, it is proposed that adding additional factors may create a so on and so forth. So they are uh, recommending to add more factors. Okay, I will give you some uh, some things to see, but before that. Conclusion and recommendation are both your own judgments, your own whatever you want to write. Okay? What's the difference between them? Conclusion comes from what you already found, from your results. Recommendations are for future. Recommendations are for future. Okay, got it? So you would, you would say on the basis of my study, I recommend that in future it should be done. Maybe you will do it. In future we will do this. 